We greet you all with the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the Word of God, let's stand. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Matthew. Gospel written by Matthew, chapter 22. Let's start our reading in the verse 29. Jesus answered and said to them, you are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Lord, we bless you for one more time in your presence, in your presence, in your house, for the songs that have spoken to our hearts, and for the action of your Holy Spirit among us. We ask you that you can help us, that your word can bless us, your church, your people, in the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. In the day of Jesus, as in our days, there was always and there will be questioning. And at the days of Jesus, people went to him to ask his opinion. And in our days, it's very common. People try to, to hear different opinions social media it's full of opinions i think this i think that and the man is like that this is part of the the human being features in the day of jesus they tried jesus and they used a coin and they asked him if he was right to pay tribute to Caesar and Jesus answered give to Caesar whatever is from Caesar and give to God whatever belongs to God so there's no confusion later on they asked seven husbands a woman had and all the seven died by the resurrection how this how this gonna be if she had seven husbands to whom she will belong and Jesus said, at the resurrection, they will not marry, and they will be like the angels. Did you ever see an angel getting married? There is no such a thing. Because the, the marriage was created by God for, with one purpose to grow and multiply. It's a project for the, the mankind. And that's why during the marriage, man and, wo and woman, husband and wife is highly blessed and whatever God put together, the not separated man. So here we see Jesus saying that those people uh, that are that were questioning him, they will people that knows the scriptures. Their question was not made by someone totally out of the the religious field or anybody that did not have access to the scriptures from back back then. But it was made by the Pharisees, the people that studied the scriptures. And they know all the, the law of God. And the text, Jesus was saying, you are making mistakes because you're not knowing the scriptures. And also, nor the power of God. So, lack of knowledge of two things. To make mistakes, 
doesn't mean that you are sinning per se. The sin, the meaning of sin is when you do something knowing that this is against the will of God, the word of God, and the, the instructions from God. So when you sin, you are disobeying something that you already know that you're not supposed to do and you do. So when you see in Genesis, the beginning of everything, the man, the, our first fathers, they sin knowing what was forbidden. And even though they knew, they decide to do the wrong. They made a bad choice, the wrong choice. And they did exactly the opposite of God's project. But to make a mistake, sometimes it's just a triple. And James, one of the apostles of Jesus, he says, we all triple in something. We triple down something. If you, if you make a mistake in that and that word, the Bible says we, we are subject to failures. Even if we don't want it, we sometimes do things that is not a, something that God wants. So the word talks clearly about that. When you take the prodigal son, he, he made the decision to leave the household. When you see the lost ship, And what that means, the ship that got lost, is to take a wrong decision and miss the way. Bible says, I keep moving forward to the, the reward, the great reward, Jesus. Also, Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said about himself. So when the man committed a flaw, sometimes it's involuntary act or for lack of knowledge. And in this case here, it's the instructions from God. Two verses very known. The one that we just read and there's another passage that says, you examine the scriptures because you find in there the eternal life. So when the man make a wrong because of lack of knowledge, Jesus here is saying, not knowing the scriptures. So it's fundamentally for man, for the servant of God, the one that desire to walk in the presence of God to have plenty knowledge of the word of God because if I don't know the word of God of course I'll do wrong and I'll be deceased there is a very common phrase it's not in the Bible but it's something famous do your side and I'll help you see you, you all know but there's no such a thing in the Bible so sometimes even the, the religious people make citation of things that they think that is in the Bible, and it's not. Once a worker made a message about the steps on the sand, this is something written by someone not in the Bible. He created a story of a, a man that was looking at the step on a, on, a, on a sand by the beach and he someone decided to make something important of these like a, to hang it on a wall and so this poor worker went to the pulpit and preached about it thinking that this was in the Bible so to not have knowledge of the scriptures is something dangerous so the first thing that we need to make sure is to study the Bible from cover to cover. Knowledge of the project of God 
because in the Bible is the project of God for my life, for your life, for our lives, for our families, for our professional life. Everything is here. When Solomon, the king, and he took the, the kingdom, the throne, what did he ask God? He asked for wisdom. Why? Because he wanted to have wisdom. He wanted to, to have enough knowledge to walk in the presence of the Lord. Not knowing the scriptures, it's something dangerous. It's fundamental that we know the scriptures of so many informations. You're going to see everything, absurd things. And if you are not well founded in the knowledge of the Bible as the Word of God, certainly you will be living the way, you're going to lose the direction. You're going to be lost on the way. So. The Lord is showing us tonight how important. That's why the Sunday school teaching is so important for the church. So it's supposed to last two, three hours if we think reasonably. Because sometimes we spend two, three hours in front of a cell phone and we never get tired. Why? Because in the Bible school you are learning two things that I mentioned here. The knowledge of the scriptures and the power of God. The letter per se kills, but the Spirit brings life, the power of God. It's what unveils and reveals the real will of God in our lives. It's the unveiling of the power of God. And this week... We work on top of a text that says, Why should I be the one that makes wrong at your feet? Tell me where you take your, your, your flocks to pastures. So in the woman figure of Songs of Solomon, there was this concern. Where is your, your, your house? Where do you live? Where you dwell? It's the same questioning that Andre and Peter made to Jesus. Where do you live? I wanted to know where can I meet you? Where, where do you dwell? Where is your house? Why? Because there was many houses. But he wanted to know where was the house of the Son of God. So he can go to the, the house of the Son of God and be with him in his house. So the, the text in, in Songs of Solomon, the, the lady, the Sulamite says, why should I make it wrong at the feet of the flocks? Because church is the body of God. We are members that belong to a body. My hands, I have five fingers, and I have an arm, I have my head, I have my body, my, my core. So elementary school. So if you remove a member, what's going to happen to this member? This limb will deteriorate. will go to necrosis and soon you're going to see just the bones there so church does the church saves no but the saves need to be together the saved ones need to be together in the church in the body of christ jesus also then answered you make it wrong for the lack of knowledge of the scriptures and the power of god
The presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of the servants is very important. The Apostle Paul says something very interesting. <clears throat> there was a problem, one difficulty. And sometimes we do have our struggles, our issues, things that we have difficulty to conquer. And Paul, the Bible says, he had a problem. And this problem, once in a while, he suffered because of that problem. And he called a thorn in the flesh. Desire, a feeling like a, a way to think. And he prayed to the Lord so the Lord can remove that, give me deliverance from it. But the Lord said to him, Paul, my grace is sufficient because my power perfectioned in the weakness. So when I am feel weak, I am strong. So this is what Paul was talking about, the power of God that perfectioned during the, the moments of weakness. What that means? is to recognize that you are dependent, weak. David, king, he said, I am poor and needy. He recognized that he depends on grace and power of God and his mercies. Is to recognize the forgiveness through the sacrifice of Jesus at the cross on the Calvary. It's re to recognize the death and resurrection of Jesus. So because today the world is saying you can do and you can be whatever you want. You can be your own God. But the power of God can be perfectioned in the life of the weak. So when I am weak, I am strong because the Lord is the one that strengthened me. Jesus that brings me strength. So when Jesus approached to these people, he said to them, you mistaken because not knowing the scriptures. We need to, every day, to know more and more the scriptures and more and more to have intimacy with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit, with the power that God has to reveal His plan to our lives. Because the lyrics, the letter, you're going to be confused. If you, if you decide to discuss the scriptures without the Holy Spirit, you will be in trouble. But it's necessary to have the knowledge of the Word and the power of God. As we used to say, the, 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 the Word of life and the living Word. When you have the Bible, which is the Word of life, you might be lost. But when you have the living Word, it's impossible to lose the way, lose direction, to lose direction. Thousands will fall at your side and 10,000 to your right, but you're not going to be affected. Do you know when you're not going to be affected? When you give ear to the voice of the Holy Spirit and you listen to a voice behind you. This is the way. Do not deviate to the right or to the left. This is the power of God. It's the information that comes from the Holy Spirit. It's the direction of the Holy Spirit for the church within a plan that comes from God. The only one that knows God's wills and God's power is the Holy Spirit. Some approach to Jesus and say, where is the way? And Jesus says, I am the life, I am the way. And I am the truth. Many ways in this world, 
But if you leave the Spirit of God to conduct you, you're, gonna, you're not going to make it wrong. On the past, Jesus baptized in one area and John the Baptist baptized in the other area. So someone approached and said, Jesus is baptizing more than you. So John says, it's important that he grows and I diminish. This is what Paul also, Paul also repeated. When I am weak, I am strong. So the Lord showed tonight a servant that during this week she was watching something online, cell phone or computer, something digital. And it was something that was not good. And that brought confusion to her mind. If you keep looking too much of the things of this world, and if you're not well structured, your mind will enter in a bad situation. God is not a God of confusion. If there is confusion, leave it because God is not there. God is not a God of confusion. So the, the Lord showed in the gift that there was a woman that got involved with something, watching something, and she, re she regretted, she asked for forgiveness. And she asked the Lord to speak to her tonight, confirming that He is like forgiving her. So this is an experience that God is giving to this person, this lady. The Lord also showed another gift, a family working on a field, it's a big field, and the whole family was involved in this field. And at the end of the day, the payment was done in golden coins. Many golden coins coins of gold, made out of gold. So the family did not understand the value of this payment. When you are called to do the Word of God, to do the, the work of the Holy Spirit, before you start, you already paid. First thing, God is not the, 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 the boss that's going to wait for you to work and pay you later. God pays in advance beforehand when you were called to be part of the God's project when he sent his son to die on the cross was the high price that was paid and this cannot be paid with gold or silver this was the price of the precious blood of Jesus so just that is enough to for us to praise the Lord to be grateful because he paid the high price for us, impossible to repay. And secondly, everything we do for God, there was a reward, Bible says. Nothing is in vain. And he's showing a family tonight that is involved in the work of God and the Lord is being rewarding them with peace, with health, with consolation even the material life being blessed because when you serve the Lord everything goes well God opens doors it's a hundred times in this world and the eternal life but this family they are not aware of that they not understand the value of all this that represents the, the, the power of God in the life of this family members and they are hiding that the Word of God says you don't, open, you don't lit a lamp and you put underneath something that covers it. So, so we are being spreading the, the, the Word of God every Sunday school, right? And you will be my witness. 
you're going to be my witness around the world. And you have to spread and announce what God has done. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless this family. Let's sing a song. Let's stand and let's have a word of praise to the Lord. Elias. No projections. You are a God that in you there's no confusion. Many voices we hear all over the world, but your voice is the one that keeps us in your way. Thanks, O oh Lord, for one more opportunity to listen to your voice. 
Oh, glory and all honor to you tonight. You are the only God. We adore you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we used to say to do wrong is something human. But to stay in the, in the wrong, like in the mistake. So that's why the Lord says to us, go and do not make it wrong anymore. Knowing the scriptures and the power of God. Every time we examine the scriptures, we know Christ better and more. Is the way, is the truth and the life. We adore you, Father. We bless you. And we are grateful for this fellowship. And receive our fellowship, our adoration. Bless your people, your church, the visitors. The ones that are visiting tonight. That your grace can reach their hearts. Bringing peace, refreshing, and sanctification and salvation. In the name of Jesus, amen. In your name we say, the grace, our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the eternal consolations of the Holy Spirit be with your people now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. Tomorrow, 10 a.m., we will have the Sunday school teaching. Normally it's 10.30, but tomorrow again we're going to anticipate 30 minutes because at 11.30 we will have the Gospel Without Borders, America and Canada. There, was peop there will be people coming from all over the, the South Florida and some from other states. Youth that will be with us and the whole church is invited to participate in with us. Amen. Let's keep praying for this event until tomorrow. So tomorrow they can translate with uh, safe and sound and they can return in peace and also having a good trip back. Any more announcements? Let's keep praying for the Church of Coral Springs. The work are doing very well. So many servants helped us. So several workers joined to help. So let's keep praying. So from now on, we're going to have several moments of that. So if you're able to join us to help. So our design is that we can have the New Year's vigil in the new church. So let's pray so the Lord can bless us and make us victorious in this remodeling of the new church in Coral Springs. If you need a prayer, if you want an assistance, just give us a signal. We can pray with you. I say to you all, peace of the Lord. Alguém lá atrás está pedindo assistência.